All right, you are welcome again. Today, let's talk about how to solve differential equations using Laplace transform. How to use Laplace transform to solve ordinary differential equations, okay? Now, let's take a look at this problem. Solve the differential equation using Laplace transform. Y prime minus y is equal to t exponential to t subject to or the initial value y of 0 is equal to 1. Okay? Yes, this is the problem that is given to us to solve and this is an ordinary differential equation. You know, we can solve this problem using any other method okay but in this case we are asked to use laplace transform now let's go now i want you to pay attention to this question i'm very sure you can recall and you can remember that this y prime minus y equal to t exponential to t is the same as dy dt minus y is equal to t exponential to t. I'm very sure you are aware of this, right? Good. So this is the question we are asked to solve. Now, you know, the question says using Laplace transform. So using Laplace transform, we are going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. And then taking the Laplace transform of both sides, we are going to take the individual Laplace transform. Okay, so taking the individual Laplace transform, we are going to say the Laplace transform of y prime minus the Laplace transform of y is equal to the Laplace transform of t exponential to t. Okay, yes, let's call this equation one. Now, before we continue, let me show you something. By definition, the Laplace transform of the first derivative is given as the Laplace transform of y prime is equal to s, the Laplace transform of y, minus y of 0. Hello. So this is, by definition, the Laplace transform of the first derivative. Okay? Good. Now, you know, we see a new value for the Laplace transform of y prime so this value which we call equation 2 let's substitute it in equation 1 so substituting we are going to have s laplace transform of y minus y of 0 minus laplace transform of y is equal to the laplace transform of t exponential to t okay good now Applying the initial value, okay, that is given to us, we say that y of 0 is what is 1. So let's substitute in place of this y of 0. So that means we are going to have s, the Laplace transform of y, minus, in place of y of 0, we have minus 1. Then we have minus Laplace transform of y is equal to the Laplace transform of t exponential to t. Okay? Good. Now, look at this place. In this place, we have s, the Laplace transform of y, and then we also have minus the Laplace transform of y. Let's factor out the Laplace transform of y. Okay? The first one is having coefficient s, and the second one is having coefficient minus 1. So let's factor out the Laplace transform of y. So we'll factor it out. We are going to have s remaining in the first term. Factor it out in minus Laplace transform of y. We're going to have minus 1 remaining. Equal to, in the right-hand side, where we have the Laplace transform of t exponential to t. Recall that in one of our previous videos, we treated the different forms of the Laplace transform of exponential a t f of t. When you have a function f of t multiplied by exponential a t, there's a way you write it, okay? That is called 
shifting property. The first shifting property. Okay? Yes. That is called the shifting property. We will say it's going to give us S minus E. Is that true? Yes. Now look at this. What we have here. Our function here is T multiplied by E raised to the power of what? 2T. So what is it going to give us? The Laplace transform of T is going to give us 1 all over S squared. So in place of S, we are going to substitute and say S minus 2. All right. So the Laplace transform of T exponential 2T is giving us 1 all over S minus 2 in bracket squared. All right. Now let's go. You know, here we have minus 1. Then we take it to the other side. We have plus 1. Okay. Good. Now let's go. Here we are having the Laplace transform of y, open bracket, s minus 1, is equal to 1 all over s minus 2 in bracket squared plus 1. Okay? Yes. Now, you know, we are looking for the Laplace transform of y, or we are actually looking for y, the value of y, right? But here we have the Laplace transform of y. Let's make this Laplace transform of y the subject. So that means we multiply both sides by 1 all over s minus 1. Okay? That is, you can say divide both sides by the coefficient of this Laplace transform of y. Okay? Or is the same thing as say multiply both sides by 1 all over s minus 1. Okay? To make the Laplace transform of y, the subject. So when we do so, we are going to see that the Laplace transform of y is equal to, here we have 1 all over s minus 2 in bracket squared plus 1 multiplied by 1 all over s minus 1. Okay? Yes. In this big bracket, when we combine it and then multiply this, 1 all over s minus 1 outside. We are going to see that we have 1 plus s minus 2 in bracket squared all over s minus 2 in bracket squared s minus 1. Okay? So here we see that after simplifying, we have the Laplace transform of y is equal to s squared minus 4s plus 5 all over s minus 2 in bracket squared multiplied by s minus 1. Okay? Yes. Remember, we are actually looking for the value of y, not the Laplace transform of y. Okay? But let's go. Let's take it gradually. What we do here is this. We apply partial fraction decomposition to break this down. Okay? Now, to apply partial fraction decomposition, we are going to say that this is equal to, we have A all over the first factor plus B all over the, the first factor again repeated plus C all over the second factor. All right? Yes. You know, please, if you are not conversant with this partial fraction decomposition, we have lessons already on this. Please do well to visit them and then get yourself familiar with it okay so now look at what we do we multiply through by s minus 2 in bracket squared s minus 1 all right yes so when you multiply through we are going to have s squared minus 4s plus 5 is equal to a open bracket s minus 2 in bracket s minus 1 in bracket plus B, open bracket, S minus 1, close the bracket, plus C, open bracket, S minus 2, in bracket, squared. Let's call this equation 3. I'm very sure you know how we get this, right? When you multiply through by S minus 2 squared, S minus 1. Okay? Good. Now, in this place... We are going to set s minus 1 equal to 0. That is one of the factors. s minus 1. When you equate it to 0, that means you say that s is equal to 1. So in this equation 3, anywhere we see x, 
we replace it with 1. So when we do so, we are going to see that C is equal to 2. Alright? Yes. Now, again, we set the second factor to 0, which is S minus 2. We say it's equal to 0. So giving us S is equal to 2. So in the same equation 3, anyway we see S, we write 2. So we are going to come out with B is equal to 1. Alright? Yes. You know, we are looking for A, B, C. And in this place, setting the factors equal to 0, we are able to find C and B remaining A. So what do we do now? Now look at this equation 3. Where we have s squared minus 4s plus 5 equal to a over bracket s minus 2 close bracket s minus 1 close bracket plus b s minus 1 in bracket plus c s minus 2 in bracket squared. Okay? What we do, we open all the brackets and then collect like terms. Factor out s squared s and then as the case may be. Okay? And then group them one side so when we do so look at what we are going to have we are going to have this equation s squared minus 4s plus 5 equal to a plus c in bracket s squared plus b minus 3a minus 4c in bracket s plus 2a minus b plus 4c okay yes so now look at this equation now we compare their coefficient the coefficient of s squared in the right hand side is equal to the coefficient of s squared in the left hand side. Coefficient of s in the right hand side is equal to the coefficient of s in the left hand side. Okay? Good. Now, when we compare the coefficient, we see that a plus c in our right hand side is equal to what? 1. Again, b minus 3a minus 4c is equal to minus 4, which is the coefficient of s. Then lastly, we say that 2a minus b plus 4c is equal to 5, which is the coefficient of s raised to the power of 0. Okay? Here we have equation a, equation b, equation c. Okay? So here, you know, we are looking for a, right? Good. We can use any of these three equations to find your A. You can use any of them. To, you are going to obtain your A. So let's simply use equation A. Equation A, we have A plus C is equal to 1. All right? Where we already know that uh, C is equal to 2. Okay? So we take it to the other side. We're going to say A is equal to 1 minus 2. So A is equal to minus 1. All right? Yes. So using partial fraction decomposition, we are able to find A to be minus 1, B to be 1, and C to be 2. So let's substitute. You know, in this place where we have the Laplace transform of Y is equal to s squared minus 4s plus 5 all over s minus 2 in bracket squared s minus 1 equal to a all over s minus 2 in bracket plus b all over s minus 2 in bracket squared plus c all over s minus 1 in bracket. You know, here we have found the value for a, b, and c. So substitute in here. We are going to see that the Laplace transform of y is equal to, we have minus 1 all over s minus 2 in bracket plus 1 all over s minus 2 in bracket squared plus 2 all over s minus 1. Okay? Yes. Now look at this. We have the Laplace transform of y is this. But we are actually looking for the value of y. That is the solution. Right? What we do here is we take the Laplace inverse of both sides. The Laplace transform inverse of both sides. That is, we are going to say the Laplace inverse of y 
is equal to the Laplace inverse of minus 1 all over s minus 2 in bracket plus the Laplace inverse of 1 all over s minus 2 in bracket squared plus the Laplace inverse of 2 all over s minus 1 in bracket. All right? Yes. So when we take the Laplace inverse of Laplace transform of C, it's just going to remove the Laplace, right? You are going to have Y equal to. When we take the Laplace inverse of minus 1 all over S minus 2, it's going to give us minus E raised to the power of 2T. Then we say plus. When we take the Laplace inverse of 1 all over S minus 2 in bracket squared, it's going to give us T. E raised to the power of 2T. Plus, when we take the Laplace transform of 2 all over S minus 1, you know we are going to bring 2 down, right? Yes, then we have 2 E raised to the power of T. So, therefore, the solution to the ordinary differential equation that we are given to solve is Y is equal to minus E raised to the power of 2T plus T E raised to the power of 2t plus 2e raised to the power of t. All right? Yes. Thank you very much for watching. Please, if you are new to our YouTube channel, do well to subscribe, like, share our videos, and stay blessed. Let's take more examples. Thank you.